I want to talk today about naming alkanes in organic chemistry. And the system that we're going to use today is the systematic way of naming compounds, often referred to as the IUPAC system. And IUPAC stands for the name of the group that came up with this system that we're using, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So we're using the IUPAC system which is based on having a series of designators for different chain lengths. And if we just look at what those chain length designators are, we can see that based on the size of the chain, each of these compounds has a different name. And, and some of them are logical based on what we've seen before. For instance, the 10 carbon chain is decane, 9 carbon chain is nonane, 8 carbon chain is octane. There are a few newer ones, like 1 carbon is methane, 2 carbon is ethane. But all of the naming that we do is going to be based on using these designators to indicate the length of the chain we have. We're also going to have substituents, groups coming off of these chains. So if we look at these substituents, for instance, the one carbon chain is methane, the one carbon substituent is methyl, the two carbon chain is ethane, the two carbon substituent is ethyl, and so on all the way down to um, decane, where decane is the 10 carbon chain and decal would be the 10 carbon substituent. Now, there are chains and substituents longer than 10. We're not going to worry about those right now. But I want to clarify something for a minute. What do we mean by a substituent? So what is a substituent? Well, if we have to define it, I think the simplest way to define it, a substituent is a group coming off of a carbon chain. So for instance, if the following molecule is pentane, and we call it pentane because it has one, two, three, four, five carbons, then we could draw another molecule with a substituent coming off of pentane. For instance, this molecule is 2-methylpentane. It's still a pentane because we have a one, two, three, four, five carbon chain, but the substituent coming off of the pentane is, and the methyl, highlighted in red here, is our substituent. And it's named methyl, not methane, because it's the substituent coming off the main chain, which is pentane. So we need to talk a little bit about how we decide what is our main chain or our parent chain and what is our substituent. And the general rule that we're going to use is that the main chain or the parent chain that we're looking for that's going to have the A-N-E ending in it is always going to be our longest chain. So the parent compound is always made of the longest continuous chain. So the first thing that we're doing whenever we are trying to name an alkane or any organic compound is we're trying to find the longest continuous chain and then we're going to number the carbons on it. And this is not always straightforward, although sometimes it is. For instance, in this compound, we're going to start numbering here and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. There are five carbons with a substituent coming off of it. So we're going to name this as a substituted pentane. And we could talk later about what those substituents coming off of it are. I mean, I could highlight them if you wanted to. You've got a two carbon substituent here and a one carbon substituent here. But the longest straight chain is one, two, three, four, five. Other times, this is not as straightforward a determination. For instance, in this compound, it's tempting to start numbering here and say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is the longest chain. However, if we to get something like this, that would not be right. It would be wrong. The reason that this is wrong is that there's another way that we can number this that gives us a longer continuous chain. In fact, we can start numbering from here and go 1, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. If we do that, numbering from here and going around like this, we find that we have a substituted heptane, not a substituted hexane. It, the longest continuous chain does not have to be in a straight line. Remember, we have free rotation around the single bonds in an alkane, so we could rotate, if we had a three-dimensional model of this molecule, around any of these bonds and arrange it so that this chain is actually in the straight line. So we're looking for the longest continuous chain, no matter whether or not we're starting on the left and going on the right, or here starting over on the bottom right and finishing up on the um, top right. Sometimes you might find that there are two different ways to get a chain of the same length. For instance, in this case, I could start here and go one, two, three, four, five, six. Or I could start up here and go one, two, three, four, five, six. When we have a situation like this where there are two different ways to find the longest continuous chain, we need a rule that allows us to determine which one to choose. And the rule that we use is if you find two different ways to number the chain, each giving the same length, use the one that has more substituents. So if we look at this and try to figure out which of our two ways of numbering the above chains has more substituents, looking at the first one, there's only one substituent. I've highlighted it in red here. It has three carbons on it, but there's only one branch point off of the longest chain. So there's one substituent. And the longest chain is six carbons, but one substituent. If we look at the other molecule, You'll see, as we said before, the longest chain is still six carbons, but this has two substituents, two branch points coming off the longest chain. So there's a branch right here coming off at carbon number two. There's another branch coming off at carbon three. So this has two substituents. Since this has the most number of substituents, this is the correct numbering. There are reasons for this. It turns out it's going to be easier to name this with more branches than less branches, but that's the rule you want to remember. We also have to worry about what end of the molecule to start numbering from. Do I start numbering from this end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or do I start numbering from the other end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? Well, it turns out that the rule regarding that is that we're going to start numbering from the end closest to the first substituent. So if we look at this molecule, um, the first substituent is from the left end is 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons away, but it's only 1, 2 carbons away from the right end. So we're going to start numbering from the right end. So in this case, our substituent is coming off of the carbon that is numbered 2. Sometimes when we look at the molecule, the first substituent is going to be the same distance from both ends. For instance, in this molecule, you can see if I start numbering from the left side, um, this would be 1, 2. The first substituent is on carbon number 2. If I start numbering from the right side, the first substituent would also be on the second carbon. This would have been carbon number 1, and this would have been carbon number 2. The rule that we use for that situation is if the first substituent is equidistant from both ends, give the second substituent the lowest number. And I've actually spelled substituent wrong here. It should be S-U-B-S-T-I-U-E-N-T. -E but the point is that we're tied for this substituent and this substituent. They're both one bond away from the end. So I got to look here. And this next substituent, if I number from the left end, gets a 1, 2, 3 number. If I were to have numbered from the other end, it would have been 1, 2, three, four. It would have had a higher number. So I'm going to start numbering in this case from the left side because it gives my second substituent the lowest number. There are other instances where no matter what we do, both ends have a substituent equidistant from them. So for instance, in this molecule, the first substituent would be this methyl group right here, the one carbon group, and it is one to three carbons from the end. On the other end, this one, two carbon ethyl substituent is one, two, 
three carbons from the end. No matter what I do, my substituents are equidistant. So in a situation like that, if all substituents are the same distance from the end, assign the lower number to the alphabetically first substituent. In this case, I would start numbering from the right end because from the right end, the first substituent I hit is an ethyl group. It's two carbons long. Whereas coming from the other end, the first substituent I hit is a methyl group since it contains only one carbon. Since ethyl is alphabetically before methyl, E before M, we go from this side. Now we just have to put all the work we did together and number and name the substituents on the parent chain. So, for instance, if we want to name this compound, the first step, step number one, is to identify the longest chain and number it starting from the end closest to the first substituent. In this case, we start numbering over here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is going to be a hexane. Coming off of that hexane, we have a one carbon substituent. We know that a one carbon substituent is going to be a methyl group, so this is going to be a methyl hexane. And the substituent is attached to the main chain at the three carbon, so this is going to be three methyl hexane. Now, it is possible to have more than one of the same substituent on a molecule. In a case like this, two of the same would be di, three would be tri, four would be tetra. We don't usually see higher, but five would be penta, six would be hexa, and so on. So if we try to name this compound, we're starting at the, we got to find the longest chain first. We're starting at this end, and we number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the longest chain is eight. It's going to be an octane. Coming off of that octane, I have one, two, three methyl groups. So it's going to be a, if we look at my list, tri, trimethyl octane. Now I need to specify where those methyl groups are coming from. So one of the methyls is on the second carbon, one is on the third carbon, and one is on the fourth carbon. So this would be 2, 3, 4 trimethyl octane. I want you to notice something about some of the conventions that we use. Numbers are always separated from other numbers by a comma, so 2, comma, 3, comma, 4. Numbers are always separated from letters by a dash. There's a dash after the 4 and before the T of tri. And then finally, there's never separation, spaces, comma, dashes, or anything between any letters, even if it seems like they should be separate words. So trimethyloctane is all one word. Finally, I want to talk about what we do when we have two different types of substituents on a molecule. For instance, in this molecule, I've got a methyl substituent here and a 1,2 carbon ethyl substituent next to it. So if we go about naming this compound, the longest chain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's going to be a heptane. It's going to be a heptane with both a methyl and an ethyl substituent on it. So which do I list first in my naming? The rule is that we list alpha substituents alphabetically. So ethyl with an E comes before methyl with an M, even though the methyl is going to get a lower number. So this would be 3-ethyl-2-methyl-heptane. One last example I want to look at is this one to point out that prefix, prefixes like di and tri and so on don't count when we're trying to alphabetize. So in this molecule, the longest chain is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it's a heptane again. And this heptane has one, two methyl groups on it and one ethyl. So it's going to be a dimethyl and it's going to have an ethyl on it. So when we go and we name this, we name it as 3-ethyl-2,6-dimethylheptane. The D of the di does not make this come before the E of the ethyl. We don't count the dies and tries when alphabetizing.